Here are 10 movable rock chords you must know. Now, of course, there are a lot of movable chords out there, a lot of different rock chords that you might want to play in songs. But starting with these 10 will get you through a ton of rock songs. So let's dig in. Probably the most common chord you'll see in rock is the power chord. So the power chord is really simple to play. In this case, we're playing a root six power chord, which means the root note or the note that names the chord is on the sixth string. So if I start with my first finger here on the third fret on the sixth string, and then I play my fifth fret on the fifth string with my third finger out here, those two notes, and I just wanna play those two, form my power chord. And once again, the root note is here. So because that note is G, that makes that a G power chord. Sometimes you'll see this written out as G5 because basically it's the G and then the fifth interval is there. So basically G5 or G power chord is the same thing. Now, sometimes you'll even see the note on the fourth string right here added to that a little bit thicker sound. But for the most part, just that note and that note give us our power chord. And I can move those around. Remember, that's the note that names the chord. So if it's G there, if I move it here, it's A. If I move it here, it's B, C, D, F, A flat. Wherever I move it, whatever this note is on all of these movable chords, whatever the root note is, that's what's gonna name it. So here, that's our G power chord. Our root five power chord looks just like the root six, except we start on the fifth string. So our root note is here on the fifth string. So if I play it on the third fret on my fifth string, and then I'm gonna use my third finger up here on the fifth fret on the fourth string, but the difference is I don't wanna play my sixth string. So now I just strum the fifth and fourth. So I don't wanna strum all of them because I'm, you know, I don't have anything held down out there and that won't work. I just wanna strum those two. But being a root five means the root note is on the fifth string. So because that note is C, that makes that a C power chord or a C5. If I move it up here, it's D because that note moves. So wherever you move it to, that's your root five power chord. Sometimes we want to play more than just two notes in a chord. That's where our movable bar chord shapes are going to come into play. So let's look at the root six major chord. I want to bar all the way across all six strings with my first finger. Let's do that at the third fret. And then my second finger is going to drop on the third string. And then my third finger out here on the fifth string. And my pinky right there on the fourth string. That gives me my shape. But sometimes it may be easier, instead of starting from the first second and third and fourth to start with these two out here and then put your second down and then let your first finger be straight and then come all the way down. You'll have trouble doing this if your hand is up here. So you have to really drop your wrist down and make sure your first finger is straight so it lays all the way across and get up right behind the fret wire to make it sound the best. That would give me a G major bar chord because it's a root six chord, root note on the sixth string. If I move it up here, it would be A major. The bar chords are really important to know, so work on playing those. Make sure you get all the notes to ring out clearly. The minor version of our root six bar chord is really easy once you have the major down. We go back to our major with our first finger all the way across here, second, third, and fourth. To make this chord a minor, all I do is lift my second finger off. So our minor shape just has my first finger barred across all six strings, my third finger there, and my fourth finger there. Now with this one, you have to make sure you're really getting that first finger pressed down so you hear um, that third string ringing out. You can hear it, it's minor. Once again, that is a G minor because my root note's there. So if I play it here, it would be F minor because I've changed my root note. So wherever we put that root note, that's what it is for this minor bar chord shape. Doing a power chord starting on the fourth string as your root note offers us a little bit of a different shape. It starts out the same. If we start here, first finger on the fourth string, third finger will go there. That's our familiar power chord shape, just like we've done here, here, and now we've moved it over to the fourth and third strings. So we can just play those two strings. 
but it's a little thin sounding. So we can add this note up here. I add my pinky up on, in this case, I go third fret, fifth fret, and my pinky is on the sixth fret on the second string. It fills it out a little bit. So that's a pretty common chord that you'll hear a lot. Now, once again, we don't usually play the fifth and sixth strings, right? Down here, we just start from the fourth string. But if we move it up here, that's an F. So I, that's an F chord. Move it there, that's a G, so that's a G chord. Cool thing happens if I get up here and do an A is I can actually add that low A note. Really a common thing you hear in a lot of rock stuff. So that chord can be moved around as a power chord to all over the neck, just like our root five and root six power chords can be. There are a couple of ways to play our root five movable bar chord. So our first way is going to be first finger across the top five strings. Now we don't want to play the sixth string, but if your first finger goes ahead and leans on it, it's fine, we just won't strum that. So we've got our first finger there, then we're gonna bar with our third finger, two frets up, so in this case up on the fifth fret, and it's gonna bar across the second, third, and fourth strings. So it's gonna be like this. You have to sort of flatten that third finger down to get that to sound. So I'm not strumming my sixth string. But you have to flatten it down to where you're on the second string, but not the first. If that is difficult, the other option of playing this is barring here and then doing second, third, and fourth individually on those strings like that. Sometimes that's easier to get that top string to ring out when you do it like that. Sometimes when you do it like this, that one gets that sound. So you really have to be careful when you do it, make sure you can get that all the way barred down. But that is our root five major bar chord that once again, that's the note. So if that was C, that's the C major chord. If I move it here, it's C sharp major, D major, D sharp major, and so on and so forth. So wherever you move that chord, keep the same shape. But as the note changes, that means it will give you a different chord. The root five minor bar chord shape is a lot like the root six major shape. Remember that, we start over here and we've got our fingers like this. To make the minor version of the root five, we just move my second, third, and fourth fingers over a string. So we just go from here over to there. Let's look at how we would do it by itself. First finger is barred across the top five strings. Second finger is gonna drop down there. Third finger and fourth finger. So we don't strum our six strings. We strum from five on down. And remember, because that starts on the C note, that would be a C minor chord. If I move it here, it would be D minor. So wherever I want to move it to, whatever that note is, that's going to be the name of the note or the name of the chord. And the quality of the chord in this case is going to be minor. So we have our dominant seventh sharp nine chord in this series because it's also what a lot of people refer to as the Hendrix chord, right? Because Jimi Hendrix played this a ton. Let's take a look at how we could finger this. We'll start way up here on the seventh fret. So on the seventh fret with your second finger on the fifth string, your first finger is going to go on the sixth fret on the fourth string, then your third finger back up to the seventh fret on the third string, and finally your pinky will go out here on the second string on the eighth fret. So when we put that together, we have this shape. So it's that shape, and that sounds a little weird, doesn't really sound like a cool rock chord until you get playing it in sort of a rock context. So if I play my low E here, which I can add to that, because remember, this is a movable chord, and this is my root note. So that note is E, that makes this an E7 sharp nine. So I can add this one and I get, right out of a million Hendrix songs that you've heard, right, this chord. So we can move it around without playing the low E. And it's one of those chords that works with a little bit of distortion on it, even though it's a seventh chord and it's got that sharp nine, some things that we may normally associate with like a jazz sound, it actually works in this context. So it's a great rock chord to know. The sus2 chord can really be huge sounding if we play it this way. So how we're going to do this is bar all the way across the third fret with our first finger. And then I'm going to drop my, my third finger up here on the fifth fret, fourth string, and then my 
pinky on the third string up there on the fifth fret. So the kind of cool thing about this is our lowest note we're going to play, which is this one, is not our root note. Our root note is actually this note. Okay, so in this case, it's a root five chord, so that would be a C. But when I play all the way across, including that one, I get this really thick sound. So once again, that would be a C sus two. Now I can play it without putting that note on the bottom and just play it like this. It's just not as cool as when you have that extra low beef in there. And that chord, that chord is, what it's made for is that kind of a big sound. So that's your sus two chord. This major chord is simple, but it sounds great in a rock context. I'm going to start with my first finger, and I'm just going to flatten it down over the fourth string, third string, and second string at any fret. Now, this one's a little different because the root note is actually on my third string. So whatever this note is, that's what this chord is. In this case, that note is C. So this would be a C major chord. But why that's kind of cool is being able to go move it around a little bit as well as add a few extra notes in there. So it's kind of a cool note to be able to, you know, add something to it and then hit that and know that still is a C major chord. So it's a simple chord, but really effective.